I request Honorable Chancellor to present DSC Honoris Causa to Nobel Laureate Professor Ryoji Noyori, Director General of CRDS, Japan Science and Technology Agency, Director of Science Museum, Japan's Science Foundation, Riken Fellow, Riken University Professor, Nagoya University, Japan. Sir. Nobel Laureate, Honorary, Honorable Professor Noeri, may I ask you to deliver your address? Chancellor Mishir Ka. Vice Chancellor Yadav, honored guests, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great privilege at this convocation to be conferred with an honorary doctorate degree from the world reputed Indian University, the Institute of Chemical Technology in Mumbai. <laughs> I thank you for your warm interest in my long life as a scientist and for your high regard of my research achievement. First, I'd like to share with you, all of you, my story as I look back on my courses as a schoolboy, student, and researcher. Scientific research is a long endless journey of knowledge, but it is not a destination that is important. Rather, it's more meaningful to have many and diverse encounters along the way. Outstanding research foster talented people and contribute to society. In my view, this is the value of scientific research. In the midst of the poverty that follows the Second World, War, Second World War, my parents believed that a good education was the best thing they could leave their children. My father was a gifted chemical engineer, and he had a powerful influence on me as I was growing up. My home was full of his chemistry books and journals, flasks and beakers, and various samples of plastics and the synthetic fibers. In 1949, when I was in the fifth grade, Professor Hideki Yukawa at Kyoto University became the first Japanese to receive Nobel Prize in Physics. He was an acquaintance of my parents at the time, and he inspired me to become a scientist. Later in 1951, when I was just 12 years old and soon to enter junior high school, my father took me to a public event of Torrey Industries 
and the topic was nylon, a new synthetic fiber. There were lots of people there, but I was the only child. The Tore president spoke about this new material with pride. He explained that nylon was synthesized from coal, water, and air, and that was, that was uh, 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 finer than the spider's thread, yet stronger than the steel wire. What power chemistry had to make something useful out of almost nothing? I was so impressed, in fact, that I later changed my focus from physics to chemistry and entered the Faculty of Engineering at Kyoto University, where there was vigorous research on polymer chemistry. This was in 19... 57. Since I first began studying chemistry, I've never failed to be enthralled by the beauty of its logic and diversity. I studied very hard on the assumption that I would eventually work in industry, but life doesn't go as planned. Upon the urging of my professor and mentor, I ended up staying at university. Chemistry is limitless. While young people are full of curiosity, they tend to lose sight of their objectives. Eventually, I developed a keen interest in the handedness of chemistry in what is known as molecular chirality. Numerous organic compounds have left and right chirality with the same chemical formula, and these are known as enantiomers. Notably, life depends on chirality, because enantiomers can evince very different biological phenomena this has profound implications for scientific research and industrial technology related to pharmaceutical, agrochemicals, fragrances, and flavors. Thus, practical acquisition of pure enantiomers is essential. It was our task to make this difficult process possible. My research has been asymmetric catalysis, which allows for the selective synthesis of single-handed molecules. I discovered this principle in 1966 when I was at Kyoto University. I was just 27 years old at the time. There were no practical applications for this finding, but the research was quite memorable. In fact, this discovery made 52 years ago is the reason for the honorary doctorate that ICT is so kind as to bestow upon me today. I later moved to Nagoya University and from around 1980 developed asymmetric hydrogenation in quick succession, an achievement for which I was honored with the Nobel Prize in 2001. Today, you will find many commercial applications around the world of asymmetric catalysis that we have developed. Knowledge begins with wonder. I'd like to emphasize that the success of our research was based on the keen curiosity you had in our youth about all natural phenomena. Albert Einstein said, the important thing is to not stop questioning. Curiosity has its own reason for existing. Exi existing. The path of exploration leads to progress and the eventual realization of our dreams. If 
no one had ever seen, ever been curious about the moon, we would never have found a way to touch its soil. It's rush for a university to demand that its young people achieve research result in minimal time. Rather, a university's mission is to foster intellectual curiosity. I know from my long, own long experience in education that young graduate students frequently make remarkable discoveries that would have never occurred to senior scientists or goal-driven corporate uh, researchers. These leaps of genius make technological advances over a period of, of five to 10 years that leads to ties with industry and social innovation over the next 10 to 20 uh, years. Society must be patient. The source of mind-shattering innovation is often pure basic research, and this requires the power of imagination that is capable of designing the society of the future. Science and technology is meant to enrich our lives, contribute to the security and, and the peaceful sovereignty of nations, and sustain human civilization. I'm convinced that Endeavor continues to expand in many directions in this regard. Nevertheless, it's very clear that given our need to maintain civilization within the limitations of, of our planet, infinite quantitative expansion is impossible. Unfortunately, uncontrolled and excessive human activities are triggering drastic climate fluctuations and environmental changes, depleting natural resources and biodiversity, widening economic disparity, and leading our human society a crisis situation. If we are to sustain our own existence, we must strive for enhanced uh, quality in all areas, including economics. We need immediate implementation of strategic measures derived by backcasting from the likely economic conditions 100 years hence. Toward this end, we must connect the best mind to foster the development of new and diverse leadership. I hope that ICT will play a key role in this respect in coming years. We cannot walk alone. Our individual knowledge is inextricably bound to the combined knowledge of all humanity. The 20th century was an era of international competition symbolized by war and economic rivalry. In the 21st century, however, we will have to cooperate globally for the survival of our species. Whatever we do, we must do our best. Louis Pasteur once said, Science has no borders, but scientists have their fatherland. Against the backdrop of the unique and long history of the region, including India and Japan, Asian scientists have made significant contributions to the advancement of science and technology. And I'm sure that today's young Asian researchers will continue to make greater advances in the near future. Finally, I'd like to conclude by congratulating the Institute of Chemical Technology on its many educational achievements and the valuable contribution you have made through your research over the past 
eight decades to public society and industry. I look forward to your continued growth and also development. Thank you very much.